Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time you're joining this conversation. My name is Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. And if you want to support my brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. Okay, all my dreamers and dreamettes, this is a conversation that we've been having for a few weeks now in our little huddle amongst ourselves. And there was a lot of questions, a lot of back and forth on just some things that I might have missed in my last one. And that was the, I believe it was the Black, the black Americans versus Caribbeans. So today I have a brand new part two, and this is the big conversation that's been going down in the black culture. And it's not like we're fussing and fighting as if we want to hurt each other, but it's just, just the different dynamics that we confuse each other with. And sometimes it kind of draws us apart. So I'm trying to bring everybody together. So you guys know I love you guys, and I don't even mind if you just ask me the questions or if you felt like I missed out on something, write it down below. I know y'all don't play about me. So we're gonna we're gonna get this energy going and just see the different dynamics and people's different point of views. So we're gonna have this conversation about black Americans and Africans. about you like they rarely is your friend like if they get a chance if these africans in atlanta get a chance to fuck you over or talk about you behind your back and you can't understand you best fucking believe they will now and before we go any further we all know this is a private conversation between ourselves and we share it out to the people that we love and the people that we conversate with so i'm not taking anything don't take anything to heart just because people are talking harsh they're just trying to express themselves and we understand that so let's just jump right into it let's go some of them is americanized and they genuinely got black american friends they genuinely believe in a movement a lot of them was out marching with us back in 2020 I know a lot of good Africans, so I'm not talking about all of them, but most of them, and even the ones that are sweet to you, they still got some preconceived notion that they were taught by their parents in the back of their head about you. And the moment you do something to make them mad or, or do something that they think fits up in that stereotype, baby, they gonna show you, they gonna show you that they think they better than you. They gonna show you that they think that you inferior to them. They gonna show you the truth gonna come out. Black American women. <laughs> Find somebody that values you. Value Black American women in Atlanta. Sorry. Find somebody that value you, and not somebody that's just gonna you play around with you because you oversexualize and they and they think we f extra freaks, and they want to use us for see. No, these African men ain't really with you out here in Atlanta. Like it might be a small, small percentage that actually date Black American women, take them serious, and marry them. And even if they, they you will even be their girlfriend, but they never will see you being their wife. So. Just take this with a grain of salt, okay? Take it and take it into consideration next time you see how African men interact with you and how they try to overly touch on you and they just met you and how they overly sexualize you and they just met you, they don't know you, but they just think that's what you're about. Think of black Americans okay. going through slavery, mm. Jim Crow, um, <laughs> even 2020, <laughs> we, bro, they would not be here right now. So you, we who, been, who is they? they? West Africans, other 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 black groups in different countries. West Africans, Caribbeans, um, uh, South Americans, like Brazilians and things of that nature. So you say slavery was? So you saying slavery was just straight black Americans? It was not straight black Americans. You had other groups like Native Americans and stuff that were a part of it as well. But when it comes to um, building what we have here now in this country mm -hmm. as black people. The other cultures will not be here if it wasn't for us. I don't understand why Africans hate their own people. Like, just because we live... Before we go any further, just remember, I saved the best for last. Living in a different country doesn't make us any different than y'all. I mean, sure, our culture is different, but genetically, we're literally the same. And you want to know what's crazy? African people copy American culture, and black people want more of their culture. Like, really? We're literally going in separate directions, and that's what's dividing us. Just love everyone. Understand both sides. It's that easy. And honestly, this is something I can write about all day. But some Africans feel that they're better than other blacks outside of Africa. Here we go again. But before I get into this video, let me just educate you a little bit. Black people in Europe are at most first, second, or third generation immigrants, so they're definitely African. But when we're speaking for African Americans and Afro-Caribbean, I'm going to speak from a perspective of somebody who just recently moved to America. Before moving to America in 2017, I couldn't wait to make African American friends. I mean, I was tired of Africans. 
I moved here from Africa, obviously. I wanted to feel how it felt to be friends with black people that are not African. And I remember moving here trying to make African-American friends and just feeling so left out and feeling like I did not belong, which then brought me back to just sticking with my Africans. Now, just because we stick together as a group does not mean we're th we think we're better than you, nor do we want to intimidate you. If our presence emits dominance, just say so. And I don't think African-Americans do it deliberately, but Africans just feel left out and like we can't relate. So I've talked about how foreign people of color are jealous of the perceived privileges that black American people have. And based on the feedback in my comments from black American people, I would like to add some key uh, details to that discussion. The biggest takeaway that I observed from the feedback in that video from black American people is that foreign people of color absolutely refuse to accept and acknowledge the price that black people had to pay to have these liberties and privileges. And it's a price that black American people still pay today. It's a price that was paid in blood, bones, backs, muscles, joints, autonomy, freedom, etc. See, what I've observed being a foreigner myself and being raised in And whether you're an American queen or an African queen, I just want you guys to know I love you, I love you, I love you. Trust me, I do. A foreign family, what I've observed is that foreigners are in this like silent one-way competition with black american people as to who is oppressed more and it's very much like oppression olympics yeah well you have that stuff going on in your country in my country we have xyz in my country our politicians are all corrupt in my country we have famines in my country etc etc it's like this routine dismissal of the price that black americans have to pay to be american as so many of the commenters in that video pointed out, being black in America has, has not been a cakewalk, um, for lack of a better phrase. It hasn't been something easy. And something else that black American people also pointed out is that foreigners can choose to migrate to America and move to America because foreign people of color, we have autonomy. We have agency in being able to choose where we live and where we call home. For black American people, historically, that choice was derived, or excuse me, robbed from them. It was deprived from them because imperial powers traveled to the continent of Africa, kidnapped African individuals by violence and by force, trafficked them to the Americas, and then forced them into chattel slavery for hundreds of years. Like, we cannot underestimate the centuries that black American people spent as enslaved property in the eyes of the law. Then after that chattel slavery was over, black Americans then had to spend a subsequent, what, two centuries under uh, Jim Crow and segregation laws still being viewed as inhumane property. Can we please remember that black American people did not have the right to vote in elections until the 1960s? 1964 specifically, my mother was born in 1966, just for reference, and I'm a 31 year old millennial. Thank you to all of the commenters who provided that feedback in that video, and please forgive me, the only reason I didn't include these important pieces in my discussion was just for time constraints. But yeah, foreign people of color are envious of black Americans and absolutely, by the same token, refuse to acknowledge the price that black Americans have had to pay to live in America, and it's a price that they still have to pay. And also refuse to acknowledge that yes, although we come to America um, and experience xenophobia, we had agency and we had autonomy and the power of choice in coming to America. That was a privilege that was ultimately deprived from black Americans. If for up to black Americans, they would not have come to America. Again, they were kidnapped by violent imperial powers and then forced into centuries of chattel slavery by force, by violence. All agency, all autonomy, all choice was removed from them. So of course, black Americans are going to watch foreign people of color come here and get to live in post Jim Crow, post-segregation America, post-chattel slavery America, and then get to claim, oh yeah, America is this great land of milk and honey, has all these wonderful opportunities that I don't have in my home country. And black Americans, you know, they don't take advantage of those opportunities. Because let's keep it real, with the existing anti-blackness that, you know, pervades every society on the planet, foreign people of color thus come to America and view black Americans as lazy and thuggish for not taking advantage of all the opportunities that exist in America. Well, yeah, we can come to America and immigrate to America in the 90s and the early 2000s and say, yeah, there are opportunities because we weren't subject to the centuries of oppression that black Americans were subject to. Yes, our ancestors in our home countries were subject to it, but um, our ancestors didn't do anything about that oppression, um, which is why we had to leave our home countries. Black Americans here in America did, and that's why we have freedoms because of black Americans. 
And that's why you see so many foreign people of color feel perfectly comfortable fixing their lips and talking down on black Americans because I don't know if the psychology of it, like I've talked to my own family about this, like is it that you view yourself as white? Is it that you view yourself as now that you're American you can oppress someone else and whom you choose to oppress is black people? Because as I've observed, foreign people of color never have this energy for the actual white uh, systemic structures and institutions that actually oppress all of us. Foreign people of color, like I've said before, also envy the fact that black Americans protest and boycott and speak up and fight and advocate in ways that foreign people of color don't do in our own home countries and then come here and have the audacity to speak out the side of their necks towards black Americans as if, like what, you think you're white in this structure? You think you're white in this system? Because I can assure you, we're not. So if you are a foreign person of color living in America who emigrated here, or you're the children or grandchildren of immigrants, please understand and accept quickly that the only reason we were able to have the agency or the autonomy to even migrate to America in the first place is solely because of the work of black Americans. And black Americans living in America are American in name only. I can assure you the privileges and the liberties that we wax poetic about um, do not exist for most black Americans and have not existed for black Americans for centuries. So we already know that Africans and African Americans don't get along. The hate is very evident when you hop online. But that's the thing when you hop online. I don't see this shit in person at all. Okay, I'm lying a little bit. There will always be somebody that's mean, but that's not what I'm talking about. My point is that the hate is strong online, but there's lots of love in person. As an African, I love African Americans. I have so many African American friends. We get along just fine. And I bet you if I asked any of them what they think of Africans, they won't have anything bad to say. We can talk about the bullying that Africans endured by African Americans in school, but that's not what I want to talk about. Just because I'm not in school anymore and I don't get bullied for being African anymore. I have learned to let that go because I decided to love myself. And I've been able to see that a lot of the African Americans that bullied me are now grown or the same age as me and they don't think like that anymore. If you're black and you go to any part of Africa, I bet you, you will be loved and welcomed. So just remember that just because there's hate and division online, it doesn't mean that it's the same thing in person. My dearest African American brothers, my dearest, so whenever y'all get a chance, please go listen to this sister's um, video. She's talking about Anthony O'Neill and how he uh, disrespected all of Africa saying that they live in trees and they don't have nothing and they live in the woods. That is so crazy to me that even some of the most educated among us still subscribe to Eurocentric brainwashing when education and knowledge is free, right? So... I don't understand why um, us as black people, we can't just love each other all over the world, right? We continue to fight with each other like the powers that be didn't orchestrate it all. Africans, I want you to know that our first introduction to you was Feed the Children. If you're my age, comment below if you remember this. In the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s, we had Feed the Children. And our first introduction to you was videos of naked children with distended bellies and flies flying around their eyeballs. They kept pushing that narrative. Every time you saw a white savior and you saw African people in huts, they hungry, they got disease, all of this, they pushed that narrative to us. And so now people of my generation and older still hold these falsehoods to be true. Secondly, another introduction that we had to Africa is that Africa is actually a country and it was taught to us as if it was a country and not the massive continent that it is okay it's crazy to me that we still have this um mindset about each other now i will admit i know that there will be some black americans in the comment section that's a little bit angry with me and they're gonna say that africans don't like us absolutely that's been my experience um that i'm not gonna lie to you some of the most ignorant experiences that I've had have been with West Africans 100 and I'm pretty sure that the West Africans can get on here and say the same thing about us that we've been ugly and 
less than friendly and cordial. But what I'm telling you right now is we don't have time to be fighting with each other. Because here's something that is true. The destinies of all black people are intertwined. Do you understand? Whatever happens to the continent of Africa happens to all of us. We don't have, black people, we don't have time to fight with each other because they shooting our ass dead in the streets, okay? And we can't fight with Africans. Africans, y'all can't fight with us because guess what? It don't matter, Nigeria and Ghana, whose jollof rice tastes the best. The truth of the matter is the rice is coming from Thailand and India. It's being imported. So we need to figure out a solution to that. I want to know when we're going to start loving each other. There should be no diaspora wars. There should be none. We need to come together and, and, and figure out how we're going to love each other, come up economically and be a world power like we're supposed to be. I don't even understand this whole debate. Oh, y'all make me so sick. At some point, some kind of leaders need to get together with black people all over this planet of ours and figure out what the hell is going on with each of us. We need to have some come to Jesus moment or whatever you want to call it. We need to have a moment where we sit around and we talk. All religions, all black people sit down with some representatives that have sins, that have sins and that have love for each other and come up with some solutions as to why we are in the condition we are in all over the world and how the powers that be who literally on this planet represent what maybe 10% and I, and that's me being generous maybe 10% of this planet is represented by the powers that be how do we come together and love each other we need a summit we need a conference we need something to get together and we all sit around and just love on each other and come up with some damn solutions because one thing for sure Americans, black Americans, we ain't going to figure this shit out until Africa is on top. That's how. There's no consequences for shooting us because Africa don't have the don't have the um the respect that it deserves in this country. So, that's why there's no consequences. Y'all, we got to get it together. I am a black American and I absolutely love to travel to the continent of Africa. This is for the African Americans who think exactly like her, because I know it's not all of you. Whenever you decide to buy a ticket and visit another country, predominantly Africa or the Caribbean, can you please make sure to leave that stereotypical mindset that was inflicted upon you by these white people that oppressed you at the door before you enter? And if you can't do that, simply don't go girl went to africa and someone got injured oh my god someone got injured someone's phone got stolen oh my god someone's phone got stolen sweetheart you are from a country where a teenager can go to walmart and buy a gun america has the highest number of serial killers you are from a country where when a white teenager feels depressed he goes and shoot up a school you are from a country where people who look exactly like you get murdered in broad daylight with all the evidence to show that they were actually murdered and never get any justice. So please explain to me how you can boldly acknowledge crime or incidents elsewhere, but you can't notice it in your own backyard. So crazy to me how the Western world have conditioned and convinced themselves and the people in their community to believe that crime exists everywhere else apart from the Western world. No, because let me do this again. Did people not die at Ariana Grande's concert in Manchester, England? Did Kim Kardashian not get robbed at gunpoint in Paris? And yet you still only acknowledge that crime exists in Africa? Some of these people are the same ones who will come on social media and make these stereotypical jokes about Africa about the fact that Africa doesn't have any water. Meanwhile, Michigan don't have none neither. You lot will come on this app and stay shouting about how they live in mud huts and how they live in trees, but will never take a moment to look at the statistics of homelessness in LA and New York. People like you will come on this app and stay preaching and talking about how impoverished and poor and disadvantaged and how sad it is to be African and live in Africa because of how Africa is. Meanwhile, you're getting oppressed in your own country. Believe it or not, believe it or not, it's the same way 
when some of them go to the Caribbean. And you know, funny enough, same thing happens in Jamaica. Same thing. If you ever travel to Jamaica, just make friends with one of the staff at the hotel and ask them the worst guests who visit and they will boldly tell you African-Americans. And you wonder why some Caribbeans and Africans simply just don't like some of you. Because you lot come here and stay in other people's business and stay talking shit, knocking your cent against somebody else's dollar. You lot can really stay at the land of the free that ain't free. You really can stay there. Nobody's begging to carry your bag and come. Do you understand? Don't buy tickets. Stay home. Good night. Black people only question if a war was to break out between America and Africa. Black folks, where will you stand? Are you team Africa? Are you team America? Put it down in the comments. One thing that I do have that a lot of black Americans don't have is a sense of knowing where you come from. Yeah, as an African, but more specifically, as in people in mass, we gotta kill that disrespectful narrative. Without even getting to the cultural impact of African Americans around the world, a lot of the perceived differences that we talk about so often aren't unique to us. They're just a first generation versus American thing. Back to Africans specifically, so many of our parents came to the U.S. because they got admitted to HBCUs. So, come on. Now on the specific point of knowing where we come from, I think more of us need to remember that life didn't start in our village. When humanity began, your tribe probably didn't exist. So there is a really good chance that you don't know exactly where you come from. Especially when you consider that many of our ancestors probably joined our respective tribes because of conquest. Then if you go toe to toe with a lot of black Americans on lineage, you're probably not making it past your great grandfather. They're going hundreds and hundreds of years. I say all that to say there's nothing wrong with knowing where you come from in the US. Like if folks say they come from Texas or Georgia, they come from Texas or Georgia, and that's cool. There's a good chance you come from a town in Africa that had its name changed by colonizers. We live better in Africa than you're living in America. The same house in Africa, you wouldn't even be able to be in it in America, you see? So uh, you have help, you have, you know, I've had friends come and be shocked. Oh, you have fancy cars. Oh, you have big houses. Yeah, did you think we were living in trees? Why no, not? Can, can you emphasize on that for me? Maybe if you can go deep into what you're saying. Well, I mean, they're just surprised at the level of life that we live because they've been told so many things over the years. And it's getting worse now as they're trying to kill black history in America altogether. But if you even look at the statistics, statistically, uh, most of their physicians are Nigerians or Ghanaians. Uh, you know, most of their people high level doing anything are African people. So, uh, you know, that's why they're evil and salty about it. And now they're trying to, you know, shut down students going and all that kind of stuff because uh, let's face it, black don't crack and it dominates whatever it decides to focus on. It's just as simple as that. You know, we decide to play golf, we, we, we run golf. We decide to play basketball, we play, we, we take that over. You know, you, you tennis, uh, football, uh, whatever. I just saw a video of a black American guy talking to two African guys. He was saying that they cosplay black African Americans all the time. And they like, but y'all take from us, y'all take from us. And the guy had to cut him off and read them because he's like, what did black America ever take from y'all? We got put over here. We paved the way for y'all to come over here and be able to get y'all educations for free and to have a higher learning and to get businesses and to make money over here. If it wasn't for us paving the way, y'all wouldn't even be allowed in this country. And they just shut it down because they really like Africans really try to make it seem like black Americans are just these terrible people. Or we're just so bad. Baby, we ain't got no power to take nothing from nobody. We just make lemons out of freaking lemon rinds. Like we don't even, we only get the skin. We don't even get the full lemon. Like we make a way out of no way. So I wish we could just figure out how to come together. Africans, Jamaicans, Be uh, Bayesians, Be just everybody. And understand that African Americans are not y'all enemy. Y'all are looked at the same exact way as us. So yeah, 
That's my little two cents on it. Africans are black and African Americans are brown. This is 100% wrong. Sorry, I have to be up front. Uh, African and African Americans, the difference is not color. The difference is nationality. Keyword nation in the word nationality. What nation you are from depends whether or not you are African or African American. Those of African descent that were taken over to America for slavery, those are now African Americans. They are of African descent, but have now been brought to America. Everyone's ancestors, including my own of Nigerian heritage that were then transferred to America for slavery, and then they had kids, therefore bringing birth to me eventually. We are African American because originally I'm Nigerian, but was then shipped to America as a product. More on that a different day. Africans, on the other hand, are of African descent and live in Africa or were born and remained in Africa until they immigrated over. Now you may be thinking, well then why are some Africans darker than African Americans? Because people used to sexually assault slaves, therefore putting some white genetics in the African American population. Hope this helps. As an African living in the United States, I used to share the same sentiment that Africans share about African Americans because I had a hard time when I first moved here. People used to always tell me, you're not black enough, you're an Oreo, you're secretly white on the inside, as if I wasn't literally from Africa. But I now understand after living here for eight years that black in the United States is a very specific criteria and anything outside of that just doesn't fit. But I want to help African Americans understand that Africans coming to the United States are immigrants first and foremost. Then they are Nigerian or Senegalese or whatever country they're from. And then at some point they are black. But Africans don't put black high up on their identity well as much as African Americans do. And that is for legitimate reasons on both ends. And so when an African is coming to the United States, they're thinking to themselves, okay, I'm an immigrant here. I have to do my best for myself and my family back home. The sacrifices that took for me to get here were no light work, okay? So I need to really like align myself with what's going to make me successful in this country. And because it's the United States, it's the dominant culture which is white american culture and so africans are going to instinctively ally themselves with the culture that's going to give them the most success i mean african americans even admit that they have to code switch to be successful here because that's what brings success and so africans are like all right we'll do that and it also doesn't help that for a long time africans are fed a very negative view of black american culture and that's its own propaganda but because Africans are so conservative and they're coming to a country where black Americans have been labeled as the antithesis to this conservative traditional family values, they have, if anything, more in common with like Southern Baptist white racist people. But that aside, going back to identity markers, black Americans put black first and foremost, and then everything else goes below it. And so they're thinking when an, another black people come to our country, they're going to want to integrate with us, the other black people, because duh, black comes first. And they get quickly disappointed in realizing that for Africans, black and the identity and that coming is not first. Their immigrant identity comes first and then their country and if anything for us as Africans to feel like that's my brother, that's my brethren or whatever, you have to come from the same tribe as us because we have so many black people around, we don't automatically pre-select for black, but black Americans don't have so many black people around, have had to defend and protect their culture among, amidst a dominant white culture, and so they already pre-select and are overprotective for black. And so that's why I think at the core of it, there's like a deep misunderstanding because of not realizing that we put I, like where we put our identity markers and what we put first and what we prioritize are so different culturally because of our tr our differences in trauma realistically and so it does make sense that black americans will be like oh my people my you know my brethren come here and african americans or africans sorry coming to the united states are like i'm just trying to make it here like you know it's a lot of work to immigrate to the united states and so y'all can stay over there and i can see why it's hurtful and i can see why it's taken personally and i can see the deep misunderstanding and the betrayal that african americans feel but it's unfortunate and that's just a reality but if we can talk about it from this perspective i think we can get to a better understanding um but i also believe that africans that spend 
enough time in the United States get to this compassion and understanding of the Black American community because it is a very unique and specific set of circumstances for a culture to grow and to develop. People talking about racism, all that stuff. I'd be like, what is wrong with these people? You guys have food, you have EBT, all this thing. And you're here shouting about somebody is racist to just leave that person and move on. I feel that way. Like, why are they always like complaining? But when Black Lives Matters started happening, like I sat down, I said, I need to actually know why these people are pained. And if we look at the history, what they've done to them, like if you actually sit down, watch some documentaries, how they were maltreated, how the, I don't think if I'm actually born, I will forgive those people, I don't care. It's easier for us Africans that were raised in Africa to feel like they're complaining because we, we were raised through struggle. Like I barely even have water, and you, you have water, you're complaining. But then, it's not about the basic necessity or about how we are raised. We are raised like, I don't want to say way better, we might not have resources, but there are some way, like our own um, people will not look down on us or put us behind. So it's in their, their nurture that way. Like they just can't overlook it. And if you sit down and watch everything that the, the forefathers have been through for real, I changed my mind. No, they need to be angry. However, they should still move forward. Okay. What I want people to take from this particular episode that always remember, especially in the black culture, when you say black American or black African, just remember black. We got to come together no matter what. I know we have these differences and different culture differences that might feel like it divides us, but when it all really boils down, we're all one no matter where you come from. We're all one. And just because the struggles we might have to deal with, we all deal with different struggles. And sometimes those struggles make us who we are. And, and we've seen a lot of people overcome their struggles. And as I feel, I feel, I feel I'm always feeling proud to be black. And no matter, you know, my, I'm, I was born in America, but my family's from Barbados. And I was always raised never to look down or belittle anybody. And especially not going to, you know, look down or look bad at anybody else if my own skin color i mean it's it's just absolutely ridiculous to look at it like that but i understand people have their differences and that's what draws the the separation sometimes and that's what draws the fight but always remember that the fight doesn't always have to be physical it could be mentally and in conversation format so that we can get through these types of situations and and don't be mad if other cultures want to join into these conversations with us and just see it take it from their outlook and their point of view you know be open to what's next to come best thing to say so if you really love this conversation leave a comment down below on any one of these conversations maybe any particular person you might have felt like you know similar or you might have been through the same situations let me know down below and you know i always comment back and we can chop it up in the comment section or on my morning shows monday wednesdays and fridays at 9 a.m okay love you guys it's your boy mickey fenty aka mickey made it if you're new to this channel you know what to do to this channel subscribe right now love y'all